Hello and thank you for joining us once again for another Board of Education meeting recap, this time for the month of September 2021. I'm J.D. Harden, Executive Director of Media and Public Relations for Henry County Schools, and I'm joined as always by our Superintendent, Mary Elizabeth Davis. Good to see you, J.D., and thank you for joining us today. We are so excited to update you on all the wonderful actions that took place during this month's Board of Education meetings, both the study session and the business session. Uh, and this month in particular, for this particular recap, we're gonna focus in on three big items uh, that were discussed and uh, reported on by members of the Executive Cabinet um, before our board. One of those would be a college and career readiness update. Another would be a school operations update. And lastly, would be an accountability report uh, to, to share with the board and of course, uh, the members of the community. But first things first, we'd like to uh, you know, re reflect back on some of the remarks you had to share in opening both of our meetings uh, this month for September. So let's take a listen. You know, I just thought I couldn't begin uh, the meeting that we have scheduled before us without acknowledging how this weekend brought to our attention the anniversary of a day that in so many different ways changed each of our lives. That date of September 11th, 2001, I personally remember quite vividly. I was teaching just a few miles from the Pentagon and had several students who lost a parent that day. I remember one little boy in particular who started to wear a tie to school every day because his dad had to wear a tie to work every day. And I was thinking about that young man and wondering 20 years later if his profession calls for him to wear a tie every day. And if right now he had that moment of remembering how his school played a critical role in his healing and in his grief as we all gathered around the young people that lost family members that day. But this anniversary was unique because it actually gave us all a moment to reflect on those lives that were lost, how tragic and horrific it was to witness, the heroism that prevailed, and the kindness to one another that was so prevalent in that time of agony. I was thankful that we could celebrate and remember this past weekend and thought we couldn't start today's meeting without just acknowledging the role schools play in all families' lives in times of grief, and that day was no different. So I also want to make sure that as we talk about uh, preparing for this meeting today, that we acknowledge we've been in our own season of challenge, strain, and grief. There is heaviness on our shoulders as a community. There's heaviness on our shoulders as a humanity. And of course, that heaviness is now in navigating a worldwide pandemic. And that worldwide pandemic just continuing to feel relentless in our days and in our evenings and in our families and in our colleagues and in our schools. But I still see that there is heroism prevailing. I still see that there is kindness for one another. And I see glimpses of hope that this season two can be behind us and we can be stronger and 20 years from now talk about how we came together. So with one month under our belt here in Henry County Schools, you can really start to see a lot of work developing and unfolding with our strategic plan that was recently adopted and presented to our public. And one of those items uh, centers around a college and career readiness um, you know, program that's really going to benefit the students and, uh, and of course, uh, all of our schools across the district. And Dr. April Madden, our Chief uh, Officer for Family and Student Support Services, was able to provide a report to the board about this new program. Yeah, what we really know is that the role counselors play in the lives of young people and their families, not only in the everyday experience going to school, but also in that academic advising and post-graduation advising. And we believe that through our community-inspired strategic plan that we are charged with really enhancing that advisement that our young people experience starting as early as in sixth grade to really think about how their middle and high school academic years actually are equipping them for an effective plan post their graduation day. Um, right now, our counselors are so remarkable, but many of the processes are manual. And those manual processes take up and consume time that we really want to reduce so that our counselors are spending time with young people and their families. And so we see this as a step in a direction as we advance a comprehensive counseling program here in our organization so that our community 
our family and our student guarantee is that that diploma is high quality when you walk across that stage, but the plan that you have for the steps following that stage is equally of high quality. We believe that um, introducing a new tool into our counseling program called Naviance is, uh, is just that first step into really expanding the role our academic and post-graduation advising plays in families' lives. And so really this was a great discussion of the Board of Education and it led to an, a unanimous, unanimous adoption of a new tool called Naviance that will begin an implementation process over the following year as we begin to engage young people in this post-graduation planning. It really was exciting. Another piece of the community-inspired strategic plan coming to life uh, as we navigate the, you know, the first year of this five-year plan and our board members had a lot lot to say about this, so let's listen in. This is an amazing tool that will allow the, chill, allow the students to explore other pathways, other um, careers that maybe they have never thought of, and now you are supporting choices, because um, everybody likes to have choices, and th this program is, it does that, and I appreciate Y'all looking into this, trying to find ways to heighten our children's awareness and the parents too. So moving from there, we were able to hear a report from Chief Officer Kirk Shrum regarding some operational updates for the school year. Uh, a lot of data to be shared with our board and the, and the public around uh, things like meals served and uh, student enrollment and, of course, uh, transportation delivery times. Just a lot of key information that really drives home the point of we are back in school and there's a lot of activity and a lot of action going on, but also recognizing at the same time that uh, the season that we're still in dealing with uh, COVID and this pandemic. Yeah, that's right. I mean, operating schools is just not as typical as we had hoped it could be as we started this school year. Um, but that has not uh, at all um, strained what we are able to talk about as a school system and provide an in on-campus learning experience for our young people. And I think there's a couple of key um, opportunities to talk about uh, the real um, uh, unfortunate circumstances surrounding our transportation services in those early weeks as our staffing strain proved to be heavily impacted by the presence of COVID. And um, while that was an incredible inconvenience and um, an apology to our community for that inconvenience, we uh, saw the necessity to move immediately into what we have referred to as a temporary emergency management plan for critical support services, including transportation. And we've seen results from that. And a couple of key features that I'm sure you've experienced at this point is opening our schools earlier for families who wish to provide their own transportation to school um, and an in, in investment in the compensation for our uh, bus drivers. And, um, and that investment has uh, really resulted very quickly into 45 qualified applicants and many of them going through the training process right now in just three short weeks. And we also talked about critical um, support services in our food nutrition program. And we've actually seen a massive improvement in the staffing. We also know that there are limited food options, but directly aligned to USDA um, nutrition expectations. And then there was also a recognition of the need for substitute teachers and an investment in our daily rate of pay for our substitute teachers. Really all in all, I think the conversation was about the reality, the improvement opportunities, the efforts to make those improvements, and to share a status update with the Board of Education and our public. And I'd highly recommend tuning in to the full version of this report um, to get a, a glimpse of all of those detailed um, data points that were shared regarding the status of operations. Um, you know, really, J.D., I think the big takeaway is that we believe in the value of an on-campus experience for families who want their child to be learning on campus. And we are seeing extraordinary things happen in classrooms, in schools, on athletic fields. And that's only possible because of how we've come together as a community to make it possible. And for families who wish to have a remote option, I encourage you to talk to your, um, to your school because there is an opportunity to still be engaged in our Impact Academy that is a thriving virtual alternative for um, our young people during this season. And I think the board had a lot of good conversation uh, because they are very invested in ensuring that our families and our kids have an exceptional experience in their education. So let's listen in. Seeing these students learning in these classrooms was just so encouraging. 
um, I'm, I'm just blown away at the resilience of our educators at every level. So a huge thank you to everyone. Thank you to your team. I know it's so much to juggle, but I'm so grateful that we've been able to keep our schools open. It's just so amazing the progress that you all have been able to make since the beginning of school, and I'm just so encouraged by that. I also want to take this opportunity to thank every single employee in this entire school district. I've said this so many times lately, but it really has been all hands on deck. And saw a picture of even Dr. Davis working in the food line the other day. So, I mean, literally, it is all hands on deck. And so I could not be more proud of every single one of our employees and with the single focus of our students, keeping them safe and keeping them them in school. So as you can hear, our board members had a lot to say, a lot to add in, a lot to be uh, you know, very complimentary of as, as we move through this season and how we've handled uh, you know, school and operations and making an on-campus education possible for, for all the families across our district who would like that opportunity and that option. One of the things that our district has also paid uh, you know, close attention to is uh, the notion of a critical operation uh, for our district and making sure that we are really honing in on the things that need to be taking place right now. What are some items or some key areas that we can just take a small brief pause to really focus our attention on a successful on-campus uh, educational uh, delivery model. One of those focuses for our team has really been the critical support for operations before and after school and even during the school day. Uh, as members of the district leadership team have, have really filled in, in in areas such as classroom substitutes, even school nutrition, working after school programs to support the hard work that's going on every single day uh, within our schools. We recognize there's some staffing strains uh, that have resulted and uh, you know our leaders in the district are really excited to be able to go out and uh, it gives them a lot of them a chance to get back into the classroom and get back into the schools and the opportunity to go support students is uh, paramount to everything that we do and uh, that opportunity has existed and we're really really uh, glad to be able to provide that support uh, as we move through this school year. Now moving along from there, one of the final uh, big topics of discussion at our board meeting was that of an accountability report. And uh, Ms. Melissa Morse, our Chief Learning Performance Officer, was able to provide kind of a three-prong uh, report for our board, talking about, you know, of course, we just recently had the milestones uh, that were shared out. And then one of those other prongs was really talking about the new goals and measures that they put forth that will now be uh, found in our strategic plan. That's right. Now, first of all, there was some really good news about the local metrics that are nationally compared for our students in elementary school and middle school, and that even in the face of last year's disruption in the school experience, we actually saw our young people and therefore our schools stay in this very high achieving um, quadrant uh, as compared to districts across the country. Um, but we know state metrics as in milestones and local metrics like our MAP assessment um, in isolation are insufficient and our community has called for very specific uh, evidences of success in our school system. And that was through our strategic plan. And that strategic plan, we asked our community, what do you believe would be evidence of success in the school system, success for young people. And, uh, and it has resulted in really 25 unique metrics and six of those metrics, our Board of Education convened in order to set goals, five-year goals around. So let's just take a quick look at that so you can see how our board is taking seriously this commitment to our families and to our community. And when we meet these goals in five years with incremental improvement each year towards the goal, we will increase the percent of students showing growth in reading from grade to grade and reading at or above grade level by nearly 15%. That's 6,000 plus more students proficiently reading, therefore really being able to be ready to learn at each grade and ready for college, career, and life when they graduate. We will provide world language learning to 70% of all of our students, and that's going to include 100% of elementary students having that opportunity. We'll improve the percent of five-year-olds who come ready to school by 10%, and we'll improve access to advanced coursework, deepening a student's educational experience and ensuring the right level of rigor and challenge for every student in Henry County to reach their potential. And then lastly, we will increase the number of students who qualify for the Zell Miller Scholarship from 5 to 7%, which would be over 200 additional students. I love this board because this board has taken the onus and taken the steps to say, hey, we're going to be aggressive. 
but we're going to be partners with you in being aggressive. So I want to let everyone know here, and I hope I don't take any words from uh, the chair when I say this. Um, we see you for what you do, and we thank you for what you do. But know that we're going to sit here and we're going to partner with you. We're going to listen to your voice. We're going to listen to your feedback. And we're going to do everything possible to give you every single resource that you need to position our scholars to be the leaders of tomorrow. That high achievement percentage is so encouraging to me. And I hope that our teachers are so encouraged by that. That is nothing but a testament to their, um, I mean, just they really, the word heroes has been so overused, but that is truly what they are to have been able to ensure that our students were still achieving at high levels. We have put a lot of work into this, a lot of hours, a lot of, uh, just a lot of work, and we're proud of what we have done, but I want the parents to know, just like they said, we're making sure that our scholars are getting the best. Here in Henry County, we are setting the, we're setting the tone here in Henry County. Bring your children to this county, and they will be successful. So the rest of our meeting was a part of the, the business meeting. We had uh, our standard construction report, our standard financial report uh, that were shared uh, with the board and the community. We also had a few other you know, items that were covered, including uh, if you're very interested in attending any of our meetings uh, in the next calendar year, that uh, schedule was uh, released for public consumption. And of course, the board will take action, formal action on that next month. But uh, with that being said, we moved right into our business uh, session that evening. There were several items that were taken, uh, you know, action on by our board as part of the consent agenda and approved unanimously. And as always, one of our favorite parts of every board meeting each month is the opportunity to recognize the many talents uh, and extraordinary accomplishments of our students and staff. And this month was no exception. We have so many uh, students and uh, staff members and schools to be proud of, as well as our board. And let's take a look at all their many accomplishments. Celebrating our students also comes with celebra celebrating the amazing uh, team of employees that we have in Henry County Schools. And of course, we welcome some new leaders to the leadership team. And let me start by uh, acknowledging the service of Dr. Joyce Lynn Jackson, uh, the principal at Woodland Middle School, who has now been appointed to senior director in our leadership services division. And following her at Woodland Middle School is the new principal at Woodland Middle School, and that is Miss Wilkerson. I'd also like to celebrate the appointment of Cheryl Matthews to coordinator of family services and the appointment of a new assistant principal at Hampton High School, Ms. Tarver. Welcome to the team and let's get our immediate impact going. Well, that wraps up this month's you know, Board of Education meeting recap. We are so thankful for you tuning in each and every month and giving us a little bit of your time uh, to see all the action that our board takes uh, you know, to support this wonderful school district. And we're gonna leave you this month with a few uh, sights and sounds from the elementary honor course providing our inspiration. So we'll see you next time.
the beat in your feet. Soon you'll be doing the hand repeat. Let's all dance and sing, create and move. Come on, everyone, won't you play and groove? Find a friend to greet with the beat in your feet. Soon you'll be doing the hand repeat. While this is just a monthly recap of the Board of Education meetings, you can find the full-length version by visiting our website or clicking on the links in the description section below.